In this episode, we'll be talking about why you can't design services without deeply understanding the context. We'll talk about what you can learn from service design in Colombia. And finally, if the changing role of academia is conflicting with professionals. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Diego Mazo, and this is the Service Design Show. Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you to design services that have a positive impact on people and are good for business. My guest in this episode is a strategic design professor at the Los Andes University in Bogota. He is the organizer of the Service Design Drinks in Madrid and Bogota. His name is Diego Mazo. In the next 30 minutes or so, Diego and I will be talking about why you can't design great services without deeply understanding the context. We'll talk about what you can learn from service design in Colombia. And finally, if the changing role of academia is conflicting with professionals. We share new videos on this channel every week. So if you don't want to miss anything, and if you want to level up your service design skills, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when new videos are out. And if you want to learn how to explain service design in plain English without confusing people, check out the free course that I've got for you at servicedesignshow.com slash free course. So that's all for the introduction. And now let's quickly jump into the interview with Diego. Welcome to the show, Diego. Hi, Mark. Thanks for the invitation. Um, we could continue in Dutch as you've lived here for quite some time, right? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah I lived there for three years, so I can speak a bit of Dutch. Maybe that will put off the other viewers. So let's continue in English. Diego, let me start with the question I ask everybody, and that is, what is your first memory of service design? Well, my first memory of service design, I think, was back in 2011, when mm -hmm. I was living in, in London. Uh, as I was working there as a, as a product designer, more into technical parts, and, and then I, I had the chance to go to, to a conference in the in the real call of, of art and mm -hmm. then I, I I heard the the, the word and the, the discipline service design yeah, so yeah. I, I got interested there okay 2011 that was quite early <laughs> well, do you remember the conference well, it was a kind of a informal talk it was right. not a, a big big conference actually. Mm. Maybe it drinks because you like to yeah. you like to drink, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. You sent me some really interesting topics. I've sent you, of course, I've sent you a few question starters. We're going to co-create mm -hmm. the show. We're going to do interview jazz. Are you ready, man? Great. Yeah, yeah I'm All right. fired up. Okay. Here's topic number one, and it's your opportunity to pick a question starter. This topic is called the importance of context. Do you have a mm -hmm. question starter that goes along with this one, and can you show it up? Yeah, sure. I have it here. So, mine is why, right? Yeah, explain. And yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, for why? Why is it important context? And I, I actually experience it more than than ever here in, in Colombia. And the, the the context is especially important to to design for for service design to take into account all these cultural factors there for example uh, here in Colombia we, we see uh, uh, inequality we, we see a uh, high hierarchy in society we, we see also distrust in some in some parts of, of the society so we, we need to take into we need to take this into account to to design and this is not the same as in Europe this is not the same as in Asia so all these cultural factors are essential for for a designer a service designer to to provide solutions that fit the the society mm. in general I guess yeah now we've had this topic on the show a few times already with uh, mm -hmm. I think Luis Alt from Brazil who also said yeah. talked about service design with a Brazilian flavor uh, yeah. I I've had guests from Asia and service design, although the process might be similar in different parts of the world, right? The eventual service is 
the, the same service can be quite different, I guess. Is that also what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, well, for in, in my opinion, you cannot design uh, a product that it's a global product. Mm. You, 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 need, you need to design within the, the regions that you are trying to deliver value, right? So if you want to deliver value, you have to deliver value locally. And uh, even if you are a, a global brand, let's say Uber, probably Uber is not delivering the same value in Colombia than in yeah. the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. So what, what does this mean for us as service designers? Well, I, I think def definitely uh, the first stage of the of the process is to understand these be these behaviors, right? And and this could also relate to to behavioral economics, not not only to traditional qualitative research, but we need to understand deeper these these behaviors, and uh, and then design upon that. Mm. Uh, I will say to 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 give you an example here when when you you grab a taxi or a cab. Uh, People tend to be not as confident as in other parts of the world, so they have these small behaviors of or take a picture of the of the plate of the car, or so those kind of nuances that designers need to understand to to deliver value mm. are key to to provide great solutions. So the, the, here's an interesting uh, question. I, I see this also happening uh, in our studio, but I'm, I'm, for us, it's really hard to hire uh, non-native uh, internships, for instance. But I'm thinking, maybe could you be in an advantage when you're not from the local culture because you sort of see those differences, and when you are in the local culture, you sort of they are you, you are blinded by them. What is your take on that? Wow! Yeah, that, that's that's definitely a, a difficult thing to to define because, firstly, uh, for non-native people uh, in uh, in any country that you you are visiting, you you realize of of small cultural actions yeah. that that are different to to your local country, right? But but then. In my opinion, to understand not only the action but the, the behavior and the, the the mindset behind that, you you really need to to live in the context. Mm. So that is interesting. How um, because in order to to see those cultural things, you sort of have to have a with the, the beginner's mind, right? The classic uh, notion, and and maybe. Um, Maybe it's the fact that we as designers, when we come into a different context or work in a different service, uh, let's say healthcare, we don't have a specific healthcare background. We are sort of always uh, the outsider and learning from that specific context. Could it be like that, something like that? Yeah, I think, uh, well, sometimes we, even in, in design practice, we, we find fresh minds, right, yeah. to, to create, to, to understand in a different way because we are biased by, by our own context. So uh, that, that's definitely a, a disadvantage, to, to be so biased that you cannot see different dimensions within the, the, the context itself and to, to create solutions later on. Mm. But, <clears throat> but also, so that, that, that's why it's important to, to bring it on board new stakeholders and also to to let them share their experience in a in a new uh, different context a totally different context for for them so we it could be eye opening i would say why did you specifically raise this topic because you you moved you, you've lived in several places across the yeah. world why is the why do you specifically address this topic of context yeah, because I also realize about yeah these behaviors that are so intrinsically understood here in Colombia that for me uh, uh, and I don't think I'm Spanish and I don't think uh, Spanish people is that far from Colombian people who are really close but these societal nuances 
our social nuances are are super different but it's extremely different and I, then i realized all right to design for a context like colombia i really need to understand how people behave and how people thinks mm. in, the, in in this specific area right and in this specific part of the world and why why is and i try to understand where where are these these nuances and these behaviors coming from it's it's also. um it's really interesting maybe maybe sort of not a prerequisite but what would be really good for designers is to live abroad for a while because then Definitely. when, you, li yeah, yeah, when yeah. you live abroad for Absolutely. a while you will see the nuances in the other culture and probably that will open your eyes to the nuances in your own culture i guess right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> Let, let's move on to topic number two uh because we're going to continue on the uh, latin america colombia um theme uh with this topic and this topic is called maturity of service design in colombia it doesn't say that on the paper but yeah uh, I'll, I'll make do you have a question starter again and she, can you show it up for us yeah i think <laughs> i I, cho I i choose this one who are, who are? all right yeah and um, and in general i mean we need to to understand also that the um, the discipline of service design here in, in Colombia is newer than in in Europe or USA, right? The, mm -hmm. There, there, they they have more the, the heritage of service design. Uh, it's it's longer, but still, uh, I think it's important to 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 understand the the role of the different players of this ecosystem. So the the maturity depends on. Uh, who is in this ecosystem and in, in uh, here in Colombia we mainly have the the private sector as one of the catalyzers to to develop the the practice of service design and uh, with the private sector I mean uh, insurance companies I mean uh, banks mm -hmm. uh, I mean yeah pre uh, mainly the financial sector is very hard to, to apply service design in-house. So, so that, that's, that's the, the current situation at the moment, but also there are uh, some agencies, probably not as in the, in the Netherlands or in, uh, in, the, in the Nordic countries, there, this is quite common, but a lot of agencies already are, are applying the service design methodologies to yeah to, to provide value to to these different private sector or private industries so um two questions i'll ask the yeah. first one first how um how have you seen service design changing or evolving in the last few years in colombia what are some of the interesting things yeah i think well i've been here for one year and a half more or less a bit a bit less and uh, lately, I, I've talking to to many people involved in the in the service design yeah, ecosystem here in, in Colombia. As I said, it, it, it's developing, but um, something that I, I, I've seen it's the, for example, in Europe, uh, before the service design was mainly applied by agencies, mm -hmm. and the agencies start to 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 create this necessity. For corporates to 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 yeah to recruit mm -hmm. people the experts in service design here I think this period was smaller or shorter and uh, from the starting of the agencies to the in-house teams in corporate it, it was almost simultaneous and and this happened in just one. Well, in this in this moment it, it is happening mm. so i think that that's different maybe in in europe or usa it took some time to to change this mindset but but here uh, we jump from one to another yeah. Yeah. directly yeah you're leapfrogging a, 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 a part of the evolution that we had to go through here right yeah yeah definitely so, yeah, yeah. if if you if you i don't i don't know how but if you had to express how mature is service design? Uh, what would you say? 
Yeah, we are. I would say here we are rookies, but we ha we are pushing hard to to stay at the at the fo uh, at the front of, of service design. Probably no no inexperience, but uh, yeah, delivering new ways of doing things in service design mm. that could complement the, the, the practices or the actions that are been doing in, in Europe are uh, in uh, yeah in Europe and in the in the US. So I think it's complementary because we as as the context bias us, so we need mm. to find a new a new different perspective. <laughs> In the same way that I'm talking about Latin America, you're talking yeah. about Europe, I guess. But I would be interested if, I don't know if you have an answer to that. Are, do you see any differences between um, the service design practice in, let's say, Colombia, Brazil, Peru, Ar Argentina? Is there, I'm sure there is, but mm -hmm. how clearly is, there, is that difference? I'm... I have experience here in 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 Colombia, and also I've talked to to people from yeah, from Peru, from Chile, and uh, Argentina. Also, the, the they 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 are doing good, I mean, really good things on on service design. I would say that the Latin American uh, environment has some similarities, but in service design. As I as I mentioned in the beginning, yeah. context yeah. is uh, it's a it's a yeah how, how I can say this, but it, it's a it's a must, right? It's, it's a must to understand. So definitely, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, and and Colombia are pretty different. So I'm I'm not sure if if I can answer completely this, yeah, exactly. this yeah. question but I, I wouldn't be able to to really clearly <laughs> articulate the difference between the Netherlands and Germany and England for instance so yeah like, exactly yeah I think I think that that's that's pretty pretty much it so the the different nations for you they, they have similarities but also quite big differences and you mentioned one thing about uh, uh, that the uh, push is coming strongly from the commercial sector the private sector mm -hmm. Any any uh, any ideas why that is happening? Why the public sector, while it, what, that the public sector is not picking up as fast, while in other countries the public sector is the driving force behind service design, <laughs> maybe? Yeah, I think in um, well, in general here in, in Colombia, the the investment in innovation it's less than one percent of the GDP. All right. So that that that's a big statement already, you you know. So um, yeah, the government starting with a initiative to help companies to innovate, but service design is not just known in the in the public sector as a as a discipline to to create a, a, an impact mm. or. And a visible impact, even even more to, to be more specific. So it's our responsibility to educate the, the public sector through our practices to yeah to to bet to to give us the, the opportunity to develop projects for them. I think it's it's starting. Some agencies already are, are working with small projects in the in the public sector, but this must grow mm. exponentially in the in the following years i would say interesting um now that we're talking about different sectors the public sector private sector education mm -hmm. we haven't talked a lot about education so let's uh take up that discussion in the final topic um yeah and that is the role of academia mm -hmm. yeah and, and my, I would say, what, I yeah, choose, what is your question starter? <laughs> what if, right? No, what would the question be? Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Oh, my question. My question would be, what if we change the the role of academia in the in the current world or right. our context here in in Colombia? And that that's actually what we are trying to do from from. Los Andes University, where I'm working at the, at the moment. Uh, 
we're yeah we're tired of of these theoretical approaches and uh, and that that's what service design offer us right a, a practical approach that deliver value in a, for for us even internally but also externally for for companies and uh, the role is not to to create knowledge only because we also focus on research on design research service design research trying to 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 create new new knowledge but also we we bring it to the practical side of the of the service mm. design mm. and we try to collaborate as much as we can with with companies with this private sector that as as i mentioned before and our role is not only to to collaborate with uh, with companies to to try to solve their problems but also to to educate them in uh, in design and service design methods and and bring this to a to a wider scope so yeah. that, that that's the, the answer yeah. to my own question i would say yeah so if 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 um academia is starting to adopt the role of uh sort of uh, evangelizing, uh, educating uh, clients, and and by doing actual projects, how does that still relate to the work, for instance, agencies do? How yeah. how is the role of how do, yeah how does that fit together? Yeah, our our vision is is a a peaceful ecosystem within the, the service design a peaceful i think it's the word for for colombia in this moment and uh, and we see a collaboration between uh, academia universities agencies consultancies and then the the potential clients that could be industries but we, we would like to to call them Clients, we like to, to call them partners, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. and uh, and then uh, also could be uh, that the government will join us in, in in these kind of initiatives. So it's a it's a partnership between different stakeholders that could that could bring some some value to the ecosystem. I would say. So I, I get it that it's a partnership, but in that partnership for. Uh, 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 what is the balance between academia in that sense and uh, us, us as the practitioners com community? Because if, yeah. we're, if we're both working on a challenge, right? If, if academia steps away from the more theoretical approach and... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I get your question and I, and I think it's quite sharp. And uh, I would say that this... We, we can find a balance here mm -hmm. and uh, and mainly is that we as a as an academia we have the time to to reformulate our practices right and uh, agencies have the experience of the pure practice so they are they, they have the experience of years practicing delivering uh, value for for companies and Probably they are specialized or doing uh, service uh, service design research or uh, ideating or even implementing. Mm. Right, that 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 mm -hmm. for me it's one of the biggest challenge in in our in our profession. But so we could collaborate if agencies can specialize with. Uh, 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 activity that uh, within the service design and we can use some of the reformulation of the methods of the yeah of the different activities that, that, that we have the time to to explore because at the end agencies are ex exploding ex exploding exploding and doing great job but it's difficult to find the time to to explore when you when you are in an agency, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm telling this for, from my from my previous experiences. So I think we can find out there the balance and even join the forces to to have 
even more or better results for for the clients, partners, as we want to call them. It's interesting to see or to think uh, the, uh, of the role of academia as sort of the, um, uh, the they're reflective, the observing, or observing, the, the uh, asking critical questions. Um, uh, yeah, maybe from that perspective, uh, right? It, and and I could and I could see uh, us joining forces with um, um, academia, universities, where students would observe what we're doing and then maybe uh, not criticize that, but build upon that or ask questions or reflect upon uh, upon that. That's basically, I think, what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, hmm? yeah. I think so. Uh, and also, we, we have to we have to be clear about our role, right? So I am in a professor role, but I'm leading a group of students, and those all, all together we are working for for companies. But this is complementary to an agency yeah. because yeah. an agency uh, we are talking about experts, not about students, right? Yeah. So yeah. that that's that's a, a different level. Mm. But but still, I think the the, the collaboration. Can can happen perfectly. I, I would be interested, and I'm asking the viewers or the listeners of this episode if you know of any good examples where uh, really good examples in of innovative partnerships between academia and um, uh, the agencies or the consultancies have taken mm -hmm. place in this yeah. where they have adopted these new roles. I, I'd love to hear about them. So leave a comment uh, here on YouTube or uh, please on do it. On, on SoundCloud, wherever you're watching or listening. So Diego, um, also a question for you. You've given us some uh, perspectives on service design, but is there something that you would like to ask us? Is there anything you would like to know from us that we can help you think about? Yeah, I, I think, um, well, I'm, I'm pretty interested also about the, the startup world. So, um, I'm professor, but I'm entrepreneur, and also I am sometimes consultant for corporate. So all these worlds, I think, are intertwined, and uh, it's really interesting for me to to discover new things. So I would say that, that for for me, the, the question would be how or what what are the differences to apply service design for corporates and for startups. Is there a difference? Hmm. Uh, is there not? I'm not sure, but probably uh, someone has the, uh, the answer to it. <laughs> so is there a difference in applying service design or design thinking, let's keep it at service design, for corporates versus startups? Uh, yeah. I have some ideas about it, but uh, <laughs> I'm really curious what the people will have to say. So Diego, uh, cool. Thanks for that question and thanks for inspiring us and thanks for giving us a little bit of insight in what is happening in Colombia and what you are doing uh, uh, as a professor. If people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook? Yeah, uh, LinkedIn is, is, is perfect uh, and as Diego yeah. Mazo, but also I have a Medium account that I... I normally write often there so, so you can you can find me there and twitter uh dimazo rosete also uh, through linkedin it's the easiest way to to yeah, find I will, me i will add also, all the links in the show notes yeah. i yeah, hope a lot perfect. of people reach out so diego Hopefully. thanks again thanks again for sharing your insights so what do you think is there a difference between how service design is applied at startups versus their corporations Join the conversation and leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to grab the link and share it with someone who might benefit from what we've just discussed. And don't forget that if you want to learn how to explain service design in plain English, you can also check out the free course that I've got for you over here. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to see you in the next episode.